welcome to this episode of anatomy learning today we'll see the superlateral surface of cerebral hemisphere while describing superlateral surface of cerebral hemisphere we can describe it in a different ways different patterns in physiology mostly it is classified as broadman classification there are 45 areas in anatomy both broadman classification and other classification like according to lobes and sulci and xylem we can describe this areas now first of all in gross classification we have to locate the frontal lobe to locate frontal lobe first of all we should identify this lateral sulcus because if you don't locate this lateral sulcus initially you may confuse frontal lobe with occipital lobe all the time you may not get cerebellum with it so you may get confused because anterior lobe and uh, anteriorly frontal lobe and posteriorly occipital lobe looks alike so first of all you look for this lateral sulcus which is going posteriorly and superiorly now above this lateral sulcus this part is called as frontal lobe below this lateral sulcus this part is called as temporal lobe now this area is called as parietal lobe and this area is called as occipital lobe so these are the four major lobes and each lobe have some sulcus this sulcus differentiate different gyrus so sulci and gyri differentiate different areas frontal lobe have two sulci so three gyri parietal uh, parietal lobe have two sulci three gyri similarly this temporal lobe have two sulci so three gyri similar to the occipital lobe so this is a very easy pattern to describe the superlateral surface into four major lobes frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe and temporal lobe each lobe have some sulci and gyri so nomenclature are also very easy say for example in case of frontal lobe there is a superior sulci and there is a inferior sulci so uh, superior sulcus and inferior sulcus and due to that there is superior gyrus middle gyrus and inferior gyrus similar here in temporal lobe there is superior sulcus and inferior sulcus and due to that there is superior gyrus middle gyrus and inferior gyrus so it is very easy to describe in, in that way but more importantly we should know the functional areas functional areas for purpose of functional areas first of all you have to locate the central sulcus because it is the most important sulcus among this whole superlateral surface of cerebral hemisphere why it is so why it is most important this central sulcus this sulcus divides this cerebral hemisphere into two major areas two major what are the two major areas two major areas anterior to this there is anterior to this there is uh, a different area and posterior to this there is a different area anterior to this there will be an area which is related to motor activity and posterior to this this area is related with sensory activity so central sulcus actually dividing this superlateral surface of cerebral hemisphere broadly into two areas anteriorly so this whole area is responsible for motor activity and posteriorly this whole area is responsible for sensory activity so from central sulcus will start the uh, proceeding so there is a precentral gyrus and there is a post central gyrus so the one area number 1 2 3 and area number 4 so area number 1 2 3 is located here how it is located if we consider this as the area number 1 this is area number 
2 and this is area number 3. So if we consider this as area number 2, this is area number area number this if we consider this as area number 1, this is area number 2 and this is area number 3. So within gyrus there are its lateral surfaces. So this inner surfaces also having some area. What is the importance this importance of this area? This is called as kinesthetic sensory kinesthetic area. So what is kinesthetic sensation? You must be knowing in physiology while reading physiology you must have learned that kinesthetic sensation is carried through tract of gall, tract of blue duct like tract and what sensation they carry? Touch sensation. So what kind of touch sense along with touch sensation it uh, there is also touch sensation of different areas so in this whole gyrus it's it is arranged in reverse order so the uppermost part of this gyrus actually takes sensation of foot whereas the lowermost part of this gyrus takes sensation of the head so it is arranged in a reverse order so area number one is primary kinesthetic sensation means only touch sensation only touch sensation is collected by area number one that is primary kinesthetic sensation so what is the function of area number two and three they are for finer sensation like those who are blind they can uh, palpate a note if it is a 100 rupee note, if it is a 500 rupee note, like that. But even we can palpate a coin. If it is a 5 rupee coin, if it is a 1 rupee coin, that is a fine sensation. So, finer sensation and differentiation, that is what we call as secondary kinesthetic sensation or psychokinesthetic sensation, that is, that is area number 2 and 3. But area number 4, it is primary motor area and similarly alternatingly this area increases from central sulcus. So area number 1, 2, 3 here, area number 4 there, again area number 5 here, area number uh, 6 here, area number 7. Now 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, all these are here. So what are the function of these areas? This area, frontal lobe, is area of judgment. Area of judgment means this area is a higher, higher sense area. Means thalamus, hypothalamus, they are controlled by instinct. But we judge if it is correct to do, if it is not correct to do, what are the consequences, are we doing, doing something wrong, that calculation makes us a social animal that's why we are human so humanity comes from this frontal lobe so frontal lobe here there are some areas area number the advanced more at higher number more higher judgment that gives the human characters so this area is involved for that now after area number 16 here comes directly the sensory area I have already told you that sent behind central sulcus all these are sensory. So at the occipital pole, this point is this point is called as occipital pole. Here there is a here there is an area which is called as area number 17. This area number 17 is primary visual area. This one is primary visual area. If we fall down, if we slip and fall down on this part, we may get blind because this is primary visual area. But primary visual area only sees, it cannot express what exactly we are seeing. So around that area number 17, there are other areas. If you see, there are other areas that is area number 18 and area number 19. Those are called as secondary visual area or psycho visual area. So this area, what are the function? Area number 17 only sees the thing. 
but area number 18 and 19 what they do they tally the vision with previous memory and identify that thing with previous memory the data stored in memory cells and area number 18 and 19 identify that object and compare with previous memory and certain information sent from there so area number 18 and 19 is called as psycho visual area so we have already seen two sensory uh, apparatus two sensory areas one is kinesthetic one is visual next is auditory auditory area is located here and more so auditory area also have similar primary auditory area and psycho auditory area primary auditory area only listen to the things but psycho auditory area can differentiate and decide say for example you can decide if it is a song of Kishore Kumar or if it is a song sang by Avijit or Kumar Shan. So there will be slight difference. That part can be differentiated from area number uh, 26 actually identified but 27 and 28 those are psycho auditory area for finer differentiation. Even we, when we talk in a form we can identify the voice in a distorted form and identify the original person so a distorted voice can be identified with its original voice memory so that part also calculated by area number 2728 that is psycho auditory area after that here there is a junctional area the sulcus meets where lateral sulcus is central sulcus meeting lateral sulcus this point here there is very important area area number 44 and 45 that is called as Broca's area it is not purely sensory and not purely motor it has got both inputs we have to take inputs of learning of how an individual speaks how an individual speaks there is lip movement, there is tongue movement and tongue touches different parts. Sanskrit is the oldest language in the world and it is very much scientific. Tongue touches to the throat that is Kanthavarna, ka 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 ka. So tongue touches here. Then there is cha cha ja cha. Then there is ta tha da da that is Mudha, it is touching gum, gingiva, and then there is dantavarna, that is ta tha da tha, so tongue touching teeth, and last it is pa pha ba bha, so tongue touching nowhere, only lips are touching. So, like a flute, create different sound, tongue here, creating different sound by touching different parts. Now, this different Kantavarna also have ka, kha, ga, gha. So K plus H is kha. G plus H is gha means air is coming somewhat higher. Air coming from a higher level. And then the last vertical column that is ya, ya, na, na, ma. That is sound is coming through nose. So the first letters from base level and the last letter letter from nasopharynx the highest level so it is very scientifically arranged in sanskrit and all language like marathi bengali hindi gujarati all the languages which have been originated from sanskrit these are very scientifically arranged so this thing a child sees the child sees these things and they actually learn by reverse order because they first read the leap movement and then gradually learn the deeper touch movement. So first they learn pa pa ba ba ma, then ta tha da da na, and at last they learn how to speak ka ka ga ga ya because they learn this remote, this inner aspect very late. 
so for learning they have to have sensation auditory and sensation of visual visual and auditory sensation is collected and that knowledge is expressed by motor activity so sensory and motor both are involved here area number 44 and 45 that is the area of speech which is also called as Broca's area so these are the most important areas from area number 1 to area number 45 these are the most important area of broadman classification it's a question of physiology it's a question of anatomy in anatomy it will be asked as superalloral surface of cerebral hemisphere in physiology it will be asked as broadman classification of functional areas in anatomy it is also asked as functional areas of superlateral surface of cerebrum so this episode you may answer in other university it's a 20 mark question in Maharashtra University it is a 5 mark question you may answer physiology question you may answer anatomy question for this much for today's episode thank you